Now here we have the instrument cluster from a Nissan Tida, I believe. Apparently some of the lights aren't working. I think the illumination lights, um, not, not necessarily the warning lights, but the illumination uh, for it, there's an issue there. So let's tear it apart and see what's going on. Now you can see the back of it and you've got some clips around the sides and you think, oh, I could just unclip those and the whole thing will pop out, right? No, because the, uh, the little needles there on the gauges will stop it from coming off. Uh, they fit on a shaft that comes out from each of these uh, little stepper motors and yeah, they'll hold it into the faceplate. So we'll undo the black clips around the side and the front section will come off first. Now we're going to have to pop these off. And I'm always cautious about um, where they sit. Because you wouldn't want to put it back on in a position that gives you a false speed reading or maybe the, the fuel level's out. Um, and you can see with that, uh, in its lowest point it's actually below the first black mark so you can't just put it back on at the lowest black mark um, in this particular instance they kind of lines up with that with that mark um, almost perfectly and uh, with the RPM gauge that's pretty close as well so we might not need to be too concerned about those but generally speaking they don't. They can sit quite a bit below. So I'll show you what I do, and it seems to work pretty well. So you want to chuck a bit of, um, this is just masking tape. It comes off pretty cleanly. You don't want anything that's going to be stuck down too harsh. All right, and then you get your needles all set at their lowest point, fully anti-clockwise. Or you could go fully clockwise, I suppose. It's going to be the same thing, isn't it? And then I can draw on the tape. And I can draw a line directly in line with the end of the needle. So... Like that. And uh, just do that for all of them. And then you've got a, a, a guaranteed mark to line it up against. Now there might be some other easier way of doing it, I don't know. I haven't worked on a lot of these. I know some of them, some of them will um, do a auto home where it, uh, uh, especially if it is a stepper motor type and not a um, moving voice coil type, um, and when you first turn turn or when you first apply power, um, not necessarily ignition switch on, but just they have a ignition, they have a always always on uh, power line going in, and then they have the ignition switch, um, and so the always on power when that's first applied. Uh, on a lot of the more modern modern ones with stepper motors, um, wherever the needle is, it will run it right down and it will keep, keep trying to turn it when it hits the stop. And that will give you a bit of a chattering, wiggling effect. Um, and then it's fully all the way down. And at that point, um, I think after a few seconds, they'll, they'll then come up and they'll sit at their zero level uh, point. Which maybe you could then line it up with the with the zero now getting these off there's a variety of methods depending on what brand they are i guess but most of them just pull off these little caps can come off separately the silver part can come off separately sometimes um, but i find the easiest way to do it is with a couple of teaspoons so you just come under it with a a spoon each side and then you can because of the shape of the spoon you can rock it and and lift up evenly on both sides and uh, pop it off so let's see how well that'll work on this one now right away 
you can see the the silver plastics actually pulling out at the bottom um, ideally you want to be lifting against the orange plastic I'll just have a look under there yeah it's a bit hard to see what's going on there's not really an edge uh, there's not really an edge you can lift under that's not the uh, the silver plastic there I don't like I think I've seen some people wind them fully around and then they'll just keep turning them and that kind of breaks the grip of the the needle on the shaft I don't really like doing that because just these these gears in here can be a bit um, can be a bit fragile uh, I wouldn't want to strip it out of position but um they can be on very tight but yeah just got to be careful although if you're lifting up on them as well you could break the plastic but yeah when you when you get to the end and then you turn it there's a lot of um a lot of flex a lot of force going on down in the little gearbox and the in the motor so let's see what happens here um if it pops the silver off then you know we can glue it back on there it goes oh yeah so that's why i couldn't see anything it's got this little uh this little edge that steps up some of them are flush um but yeah there's the the shaft it goes onto the onto the uh we can't really see it but yeah the pin on the motor so there you go And we popped off the little plastic piece, um, which kind of gives us access to the orange, the orange plastic, which we want to lever up on. Um, this part here that came off could uh, sometimes there's a counterweight in them as well. Um, it doesn't appear to be a counterweight in these ones, but if it's a moving voice coil type, there will be. Just um, sort of looking at how that's made. Um, there's obviously some little <laughs> little plastic stakes that would have gone down into here um, and helped to hold it together as one piece. That must go through there, perhaps. Um, but yeah, anyway, nothing a little super glue won't uh, fix. These things are really lightweight. They just need to sit there for decoration anyway. But you can see looking at that one you really can't get a tool up underneath there uh, the bottom of the needle is about halfway recessed into the cup so you're never going to really properly lift up on that really so it's always going to be a something you're going to have to repair in a roundabout way yeah just okay I wonder if it's just there we go it's a bit easier now we've got those off, we can remove the PCB. Um, so we've got uh, clip, 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 and we just start at one end and work your way around, really. Um, find one that will give you the most movement when you try and release it. There you go, so push that back and pull up on the board. And it comes and sits. Uh, it sits up past the clip, so uh, it's not being held under. If you let go, it'll push back in. So, got to keep holding it out. Um, and then, obviously, ones that are within the vicinity, so that you can get enough stretch that it can lift further and not want to fall in past the clip. And then you go and push it back in because you're fumbling around. <laughs> There you go. All right. You could stick something under the edge, I suppose, to help hold it out. And keep keep a hold of the plug and, and push against from the edge. So you're pushing, trying to always have the board under tension. So that it doesn't want to slip back in. That's mostly it.
feels like something's holding it. I bet I know what it is. So often when you've got an LCD, the LCD will be retained in the top plastic section and it'll have pins that run down from the LCD. They'll run down and just push into the board. And then when you're looking there, you can see those rows of holes. I bet that's what's happening here because the board feels stuck. So if we get our little spudger and see if we can just lift it, you'll get a, a feel for it. Make sure the clips are out the way and let's see if we can get this up. Not much room to really pry, is there? Twist. You want to be careful what's on the other side of the board too, you don't want to be grinding that up. Now yeah, can I... Alright, All right, maybe just give it a bit more of a pull from the far side. Seem to be caught on this uh, metal clip here. So we'll just push that in. There we go, get that off. Uh, it gives us a lot more wiggle room. Alright, and then... Here it goes. Another metal clip, and we're off. So, you can see what I was saying about that. There is the LCD, and all of those, and all of those legs coming up there. You can see it wiggle, wiggle, <laughs> and they come up and push into the board. And of course, it's upside down, so it's fallen out. <laughs> So just be careful of that. Um, we'll keep that in place when we put the board back on it. Make sure that pushes through. All right, dispose of that. And here's our prize. So you can see where I was prying with the spudger there. Um, there is a couple of surface mount components in that area. So if I'd push it too far in, I could have easily ripped them off the board, uh, damaged them or yeah, rendered them useless, so yeah, just be aware of um, how you're removing it and what, what you're doing. Alright, so there's our uh, speedo and taco or rev counter, um, and up the side here, a lovely array of power resistors, high powered resistors, um, often used for things like fuel level gauge signals and stuff. Um, they can cause all sorts of problems. They are the most likely spot I've found to have dry joints. Of course, there's also the connector. Uh, that, that's always got to be looked at. But illumination lights not working. So we'd be looking at things like the ones beside the uh, spindle motor there that, uh, for the needle. So they light up the needle. Um, there's groups of ones all around here. Um, and what are they doing? Are they warning lights? Interesting. I wonder which ones actually do the, the backlights. Okay, one moment. If we have a look at that, there you go. So in the right light, you can, you can clearly see the symbols with some light coming through from behind. I'm going to just do this. Here we go. <laughs> Lots of light behind. So there's the symbols. There's a bunch of symbol LEDs underneath each gauge under that center one we've got one two three four five six one two three four five, six cool and then that one we've got two four six seven two four seven yeah 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 and then that one's got a whole bunch beside it too which doesn't leave me with a lot for illumination if we come back here so we've got these warning gauges these uh, lights sorry these warning lights and all of these indicator lights we have two here as a backlight for the LCD, but I really can't see what other lights would light up the face of the gauges. So all I can think of is, we've got light pipes, no light pipes. So all that I have to go on is... These ones, beside each of the 
spindles must be super bright and they just go through and light up uh, from behind there let's go diode mode test see if we can see any glow I'm not sure which ones anode cathode or whatever um, there we go oh, look. you can see that one lights up so then we need to switch switch leads and try that one oh, yes that one also lights up yep that lights up that lights up but that one is not as bright so so yeah that one's definitely not as bright so we'll say that's possibly bad and we've got one over here I should do this in the dark so you guys can see it better and that lights up but that's that's almost as bright as all the others too Right, so having a look at the connector first and make sure that it looks all right and it's pretty good really it's um it's um pretty shiny no cracked through joints there um there's our couple of diodes are likely gonna be are they gonna be or are they not gonna be usually there's a couple of diodes after the uh, power in this is protection um, and your so your power in goes through a couple of diodes first and then out to the rest of the circuit um, we've got diodes on backwards so that pin there goes up to a diode um, but that's not passing through that way and then we've got and another pin that goes up to that diode then they head off to these resistors and out somewhere we've got our capacitors here that's um, likely going to be on our 12 volt in um, and what looks like is that a couple of they they're not bridge rectifiers they'll be just twin diode packs surely but they look alright Here's all of those lovely power resistors. Check them out close up. They're going to be problems, possibly. They look all right though. They look all right. Now you can see these, what appear to be a, a two diode package. Uh, I haven't actually looked up a data sheet yet, but it's got two pins on the left appear to be anode because there's a stripe on the right on the top there, which I would think was the cathode, and then two pins out there. And I thought, what the heck, let's just do a quick diode test on them. If we go from uh, positive on the anode, of course, and negative on the cathode, we have 0.6. And we can see on this side that these two are not joined, so it is two, the, the left two are joined, so it's like a, a common, you know, what, 12 volts in one side and then split feed out the other. Um, and then we go over to this one and we've got, again, they're both joined. And we've got the 0.6 uh, volt drop through there, so there's a diode across here inside. And then here we've got 0.6 as well. They're not joined on this side. And if we look over here, the top one, so these two again are not joined, it appears. They're not joined. Um, but then the two on the left are not joined either. So I'm not sure exactly where the, uh, the bottom pin goes to. But if we go from there to there, we've got our 0.6 volt drop. And if we go from there to there, we've got our 0.6 volt drop. Um, and uh, since they're not joined, I thought, well, I'll test the opposites. So 
1.1, so that's just something in the circuit there. It's, there's no connection through here. And then that side to that side, and I've got a dead short. Well, that might be legitimate because I don't know where that pin goes to. So let's see if we can figure it out. So I don't want to blast those capacitors here with uh, a lot of heat. So I'm just going to do the old uh, quick lift. Get one side, both pins liquid and just a very gentle... Ooh. They are joined together, that's fine, we can put that back on. Now we need to find out how to get some power into this device. So ground is going to be easy, basically pick the negative of any capacitor here will probably work. So if we go negative, so continuity, listen for the beep, uh, if we go negative of this one, and other side of the board, just to prove a point, negative here. Yeah, all negatives are joined together. We can look for negatives, so if we probe on negative and run our lead along the connector. Oh look, first pin. One, two, three, four. So the first four pins are uh, a negative, so any one of those can be our input for negative. We can just solder a wire onto there. And now we have to find our positive feed. So there'll be two positive feeds, at least two positive feeds. You've got your always on battery and you've got uh, ignition. Um, and then there'll be probably other signals, perhaps like headlight. Um, so when the headlights come on, then the, the, the dash lights come on with it. Um, might find that this one's on all the time or something funny. Or maybe they come on with a CAN bus signal uh, to tell it that, that the headlights are on. Anyway, let's start with, um, so we'll go here, so we'll go, uh, we'll probe on here, because this is our into our diode, and like I, um, like I said before, um, all of the ones I've seen, you've got your power feeds in, your two power feeds in, always go through a diode and then uh, out to the rest of the circuit. I thought it might have been these two because it quite often is just a single diode and it's not those two. Um, so if we probe on uh, one side of that one and then just run our lead along the connector. Here we are. So that looks like our input. Um, and it's got two wires going through. These ones have two, two wires coming up so it's a, a nice heavy power trace. So we'll say that that's that. Checking, of course, it is, um, you know, zero ohms, or less than one ohm. Otherwise, uh, it could be, you know, if it was like 50 or 100 ohms, may not be the feed-in. So just be careful. And then on the next diode package over, so we're going to probe on, on there and run along again. Oh, and it's the one right beside it that goes to these other vias here. Cool. So we know we have two feeds in for power. And pretty safe bet. I mean, like I said, if you want to be absolutely sure, you can go and find a pinout of that connector for whatever vehicle you're working on. Um, I, they do exist. Uh, I just don't have access to um, immediately. I'm going to attach power to both of those and we will see what happens. kind of a fat wire I'm using, I might just, I don't know which one's which, to be honest, if, um, which one's main power and which one is uh, ignition, so main power would usually end up at a voltage regulator, and then ignition just, this is more of a signal to turn things on, this one looks like it goes directly to this large capacitor, so it's quite possibly our main in. Trial and error, huh? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that one 
that, that big capacitor is our main in, our first one. I might just uh, reach that over to there and add it onto there. Horribly out of focus. There you go. So I'm going to attach um, main power first. What I think is main power. We'll see what happens. And I'm drawing no current. Wait. Yes. That is main power. I heard the servos chattering. So I'm just going to disconnect that and pop a, um, a, a needle on there and show you what I mean by that. So imagine that was at zero. I'm just going to flick it up out the way so you see what happens. And when I apply the power, which will be plugging it in for the first time or attaching the car battery for the first time, um, then it will wind it down to zero and it will keep ramming it against the zero stop for a few seconds, a couple of seconds. Here it goes. So it's done. Now if I attach the other wire to uh, positive, this is our green wire which isn't going into the second diode pair, if we're lucky she'll light up. There we go, got a bunch of LEDs come on and uh, what we don't have is, ah uh, I see, I see the problem do you? Let me give you an aerial view. I'm going to have to turn the light off there for you so that you can see what's going on. And now I will turn the key on. And then we have a Christmas tree. But can you see the problem? We have this gauge lit up brightly. We have our fuel gauge lit up brightly. Our speedo is dim. Why is it dim? Well, I'm going to poke the LEDs and just see if it's the LEDs because sometimes it could be the LEDs, but sometimes it could be the could be the feed to the LEDs. Let's flex the board a bit and see if it comes right. No. 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 Flexing the board does not seem to have much effect on our LEDs, which means it's probably not probably not a bad solder joint. Let's see if I've got some replacement LEDs, I guess. All right, I think the quickest way to find a solution is replace the LED. I really don't think that's the problem though. I've been trying to trace out where the feed is. They're both flickering like they're both under power. I just I don't think that the LEDs are at fault. Normally if you were to test one, um, which ways? There we go. So that's on, and that looks about right. We do that one, and that one is very hit and miss. So maybe it is. Maybe it actually is bad. Are those two connected through? They're not connected through, are they? Yeah, so those two are short. These two, yeah. Yeah, it's not working. But I don't know if they're the same pin configuration because of the sort of variety that's out there. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Let's get the multimeter on that and just see if the polarity is the same. Ah! There you go. That lights up. 
Cool, right, we know we have a winner. I'm not going to use hot air uh, unless I really have to. So just for the plastic in the area, I could take the motor off. No, we'll just flood it with solder and then see if we can get it hot and lift it off. Lever it up slightly so we can get a leg under it. So come on, here we go. Right, so we're off. We can see it wiggling, we're loose on that side. We're loose. Get rid of the old stuff. Of course you don't want to melt the spindle here, being plastic, just keep well away from that. That will ruin your day, because then the shaft won't rotate on it. Should be a nightmare. And I bet it's a different colour white. Don't you hate how there's so many varieties out there? Although at the end of the day you probably wouldn't notice it once it's diffused through the lens or the front graphics. A little bit of flux. Just the teeniest, tiniest little bit. Come on. Orient. Now, I really don't like having heat on these for too long. They're a bit sensitive. The pins on the left are just anchor pins anyway, as far as I can tell. They have no electrical connection at all. Different design. Look at the black thing. You can see the center LED itself, but then there's a black piece off to the side. I wonder what that's for. I hope they're not a smart... Ooh, what if they're a smart LED? What if they're actually being told what brightness to run at? And other things. That would suck. Are they NeoPixels? Surely not. Surely not. Yeah, well. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> no, it can't be because you know you can you can light it up with just a a standard diode test. I wonder if a NeoPixel would. Sure, no. If you just stick power on one without data to tell it what color and brightness to be, what would happen? What do you reckon? What would happen? Tech quiz question of the day: Can you test a NeoPixel smart LED type LED? The same way as a normal type LED. Okay, main power on. How about that, eh? It is not as perfectly cool white as the others, but uh, it's a bit hard to tell because the camera's auto, auto brightnessing. So if I wander over to here, just to give you a, there we go. So there's the two originals. There's the new one and the old one. Um, let's pop that into here, see what it looks like. So we'll sit that up into place. Um, see how well that'll sit. Oh yeah. Clip it in. We've got our wires hanging out the top, nice and easy. So now we can see how well it's going to light up. Let's kill off all our unnecessary light. There we go. That looks fairly bright. So if we pop a needle in the hole. One there. One there. There we go. All the numbers are lit up. There's no, no uh, odd colouring there. Nice and evenly lit. I'll call that a fix. All day long. And reassembly's in the reverse order. Once you've got your uh, LCD back in. Uh, then it's just a case of aligning the pins with the holes in the, the board here. 
probably find they put this in first and then put the LCD through the front and then glue the, the face on but we can't it's very held on very solidly and I don't want to, to break it off so and break the glue so we're just going to have to do our best to line the the pins up I'm looking through the edge there I can kind of get a feel for that see if I can see under the microscope down these holes okay yeah uh, yeah I was able to see the legs come up into the slots uh, only after they were mostly all the way in so just be gentle and take your time um, and make sure that they are seated all the way evenly so now the uh, realigning of the needles so you can hear if you just push it on just a little bit just a little bit um, you can hear the gears rotating when you spin it um, and then you want to go all the way till it stops if you get it to stop and it's not here then then you've got room to move it till it is and you want to line it up I've also noticed that sometimes sometimes <laughs> they uh, they don't they, they move they move once you push them down they skip out of they skip a little and I don't know why that is but the looser you can put it on the more accurate or is easier to get it as accurate as possible so that's that's like the parallax of the camera isn't very good <laughs> so that's what I can see with the naked eye is actually a little bit off still um, if you do get it off you don't have to pull it off and rotate it you can go back around till it stops the other way and then just turn it slightly against itself and come back around and you'll be above the line and then you just want to come around until your eyeball says it's lined up if I have a close look at that that's uh, pretty much on the money it's hard to show on the camera uh, according to my eyeball it's good I think one of the reasons that um, they can go out of alignment is if you have it all the way hard up your stop there and then push down on it it can twist it off alignment but if you move it till it's free to move both both ways and then push down on it um, the shaft is less likely to or the needles less likely to rotate on it so we can pop that down now you want to you don't want to go too far down of course or it'll rub on the face and it won't spin freely at all but I like to just come back and check after I pushed it down halfway and um, yeah that looks good off camera so just check that and yeah then keep popping it down you can use um, something underneath as a stop so that uh, when the bottom of the silver section hits there you know it's not touching there and um, and it'll still turn freely so we'll give that a shot and just gradually increasing the pressure on it you don't want to lean on it really hard right away you just want to enough till it lets go and freely drops down but it does spin freely still so that's where it's gonna it's gonna stay of course now we have to find a way to fix this one so it appears that that sat in there like that and then the other piece was staked over it so what I'm gonna need to do is uh, a couple drops of super glue I think on the bottom of that white plate so that it holds it down against the lid just put a couple of drops of super glue down in there and hopefully find a way to sit it okay <laughs> right um Sticking out the top. Uh, you do you. <laughs> Whatever you feel you need to do to correct the issue. There's always some kind of casualty when you pull these apart.
Taco is not too critical, of course. I mean, it wouldn't if there are a couple hundred RPM off, no one's going to cry about that. Speed, on the other hand, you kind of need to be accurate as uh, there are legal consequences for not doing the correct speed and getting caught. So, anyway. That's most of the way down. We don't need to encourage it any further. And the fuel, fuel gauge would be the only other somewhat critical one. Is you don't want the uh, you don't want the light coming on when it shows the uh, three quarters. <laughs> that one may have gone down a bit too far. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels free. Good luck to the next person that has to get it off. And the final step is remove your tape. Reassemble the front cover, taking care to, you know, at this point, blow out any debris that might be on the inside so that it doesn't fall all over the gauges and make it look ugly. And give each clip a squeeze to make sure that it seats over the locking point. So I hope you like that video. Hopefully that helps you in finding out how to power up your instrument cluster on the bench. You're looking for the pin that goes to ground, and then at least two pins that go to some form of diode, and then off into the rest of the circuit. Um, and that's about all they do. They don't go anywhere else that I've seen so far, they just go straight to a diode, so it's almost a dead giveaway. And also the fact that, you know, power can only flow through a diode one way, so you're not going to be, um, it's not going to be a pin that should have a signal coming out of it. So you're pretty safe bet that's where you're headed. But uh, by all means, look up a wiring diagram if you want absolute certainty. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.